This podcast is a part of the Podmania Podcasting Network. Check out podmania.co.uk to check out more of our great podcasts, features, reviews, match ratings and previews spanning the crazy and diverse world of professional wrestling. Hello guys and welcome to the Stardom Cast, your weekly or sort of audio source for all things world wondering stardom right here on the Podmania Podcasting Network. I'm your host, Rob Goodwin, and I'm joined by the man with a job, Chris O'Brien. Chris, how are you today? I've signed a contract, Kate. You're going to fucking jinx it. <laughs> you said that you've been offered a job. That That's I good news. By, by a possibly... Yeah, by someone on Zemo, so it, they could just go, oh no, we found someone better than mine. Do you really think they're likely to do that? I mean, it's a competitive job market. That is true, that is true. So what would this job entail, should you get it? Um, She was very vague. <laughs> <laughs> always good, always good. I think it's one of those things of I'll basically be intern and will just pluck me wherever they need me. Did you, um, did you ever watch IT Crowd? Um, I've watched the first half of the season. I can never really get into it. Okay, there's an episode where Jen gets... Um... Oh, no, it's not. It's not the IT crowd. I apologise. It's Black Books. Oh, I've never seen that. Um, and Tamsin Grigg gets a job, um, and she just kind of sits there and still has no idea what's going on. And she gives a talk, um, just using very, very generic phrases, and she gets a standing ovation and things like that, even though she's got no fucking idea what the job does. Um, it's... So it's like in Family Guy when Lois is running for mayor. It's like nine, <gasps> eleven. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Just buzzwords. Just say buzzwords. Mention synergy, and you'll be absolutely fine. I did say synergy, actually. Did you use the phrase synergy in your interview? Yeah. You're so good. I, I have to, not to brag. I've had a lot of job interviews. None, <laughs> none successful, really. <laughs> But you've managed to perfect the art of giving the greatest interview answers. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so before we dive in to the pay-per-view uh, that was on Saturday, Sunday, sorry, the 4th of July, it's the 6th as we record today. Uh, Chris, is there anything else you want to bring up before, you know, any tangents you want to go on? What are your three favorite types of sausage? Just that's the kind of weird tangent we go on. I just thought, okay, I'm all out of the way now. You're trying, you're trying to manufacture um, random, and it's a bit cringe, to be honest. I watched a lot of UWFI rules things last week. Why? Oh, because of Gleet. <laughs> um, well, not just because of Gleet. TJPW did one as well. Um, it was Yamashita versus what's the puss? Hang on, what's her name? I've forgotten her name. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> made, clearly made a lasting impression on you. Well. Honestly, my favourite bit was Yamashita, as always, because she's amazing. You put over Yamashita quite a lot, to be fair. Because she kicks really hard. <laughs> That's the thing I'm into. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kick guy. <laughs> Give me some strong ass kicks, and I am golden. No, if you like, think about my favourite wrestlers. How many of them have strong kicks? Tai Chi. Tai Chi. He has very good kicks. He does have very good kicks. Kawada. Lisa. Um, Daniel Bryan. He has really good kicks and all. True. Um, Abushi had good kicks back when he was good. Back when he was good. Um, Why are you uh, throwing that... shade at Abushi? Because he's been shit, Robert. He's been shit. Um, Miyari Miyumi. That was that's who was in the UWF. I think I like this thing TJBW do. At their, I think they're called Inspiration shows at Shinkiba where they let um, one of their stars try out a rule set, like at the last one they let Hikari now do a hardcore match. Oh, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, and it, it was against Rini Yamashita, who was really good and at, especially at that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it was re- really good. Also, um, I, I'm still not over Keno setting his foot on fire. <laughs> I thought about you the other day because I saw someone on Twitter um, and they said <laughs> Muta versus Keno is on its way to be the worst match of the year. And I thought, oh, poor Chris. I don't give a fuck. Like, I've seen what people cheer. 
I'm on cage match right now. They gave t- and Tam versus um, Sai Kamatani sitting on a cool 8.15. People have shit opinions, Robert. Well, I can't wait to get into this. Shall we get a straight majority, into it? A majority of people are giving it a nine. A majority of people are stupid. Let's get yeah, into it then. So, yeah, obviously, Stardom gave us their latest pay-per-view offering hot on the heels of Tokyo Dream Cinderella. Stardom Yokohama Dream Cinderella in summer from the 4th of July 2021 from the Yokohama Budokan. Um, we said on the last podcast that it had run the venue twice before this stardom um, and had drawn houses of 1,029 and 1,007 uh, back in October. This time they drew an attendance of 1,135, which is a 13% increase, which is great news. Any growth is good growth. Um, before we just before we get into all the matches and the shit like that, I thought it goes without saying now. It seems for the start and pay per views at the moment, but the venue looked great. Um, mm-hmm. and the production, I like the big screen. Yeah, the big screen was really, really good. And there was a couple of people, um, Starlight Kid. I thought her entrance, it, the having that big screen behind her, really, mm-hmm. really worked. Um, when the it Phoenix worked through Nagi. It worked for Nagi for the Tiger. It worked for uh, Sai Kamatani when the Phoenix came onto the screen and she was standing in the middle of the Phoenix. I thought that was really cool. Imagine if she came out to Endo Amore's... Um, what, what was his <laughs> fucking Phoenix song called? Um, Consensual Penis. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the one line everyone remembers. <laughs> holding, onto my consen- remember of holding onto my consensual penis. And I'm like... No, 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 no. Was- Consensual Penis. Like, yeah. The but break makes still... it so much more offensive, Chris. Like I'm, I'm not being funny. That's not, that's not an adjective or a verb. <laughs> like, but it doesn't go there. That's not, that's not where that fits. Much like Andrew Murray's penis, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> he was cleared of all charges. Just, just to put that out there. But allegedly, well played. Um. Now, you didn't watch the English commentary version, did you? You watched the Japanese commentary version. Um, I did. I watched the English comms. Um, and we were full of praise for Stuart um, on the last show. thought he did really, really well. He did another great job um, on this show. I thought Sonny, who you could tell he was very nervous on the Tokyo Dream show, um, he worked his way into it. He became, you know, far more confident. But here, he was offering far more. He was he was basically doing what he's good at, relaying that knowledge about the product, reliving that history on the product. Of course, it helps that Stewart's obviously done his homework. He was able to reel off stats, you know, like that. But Sonny wasn't just waiting for Stewart to give him a cue. He was adding his own little tidbits, and that was what he wasn't doing at Tokyo Dream. So, yeah, massive, massive improvement. Um, a really good job from both of them. I think it was something that I didn't know that I wanted. Now, you know, if they hadn't have got English commentary on stardom shows, I wouldn't be opposed to it. However, now that I've seen it, now that I've heard it, I like it. It and, draws people in. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if stardom wants to continue to grow, and it's, it's something that we've we've laboured on many times. If it's, you know, if stardom wants to continue this this growth, they are going to have to branch out more into a Western world as well. And a big way of drawing in Western fans is to provide English commentary, you know, following the likes of Noah and TJPW and things like that. So, yeah, the fact it's that they've bit, now got it is fantastic. It's weird that TJP went for it before, um, before Stardom did. It's also funny that they used the same commentary. <laughs> well, I think Stuart Fulton is actually... I don't. I think he's hired by Fight for Noah. Um, I don't think he's actually at, like. I know. I don't think he's actually affiliated with Cyber Fight in that way. But yeah, because he he seems to be free because he does loads, doesn't he? He does. I know he does. Um, Pancrase. I know he does quite a lot of MMA as well. So because he was, that was something actually that I really did enjoy. He was putting over the judo. Um, the judo skills of people like Rena and Hina in the Gauntlet tag match with actual knowledge about it. And, you know, they're only small things, and of course they're only children, but 
even so, having that little bit of knowledge about it does make it feel a little bit more legitimate. I did, I did like that. Mm-hmm. It's something him and Matt Pickering are really good at on the Noah shows and the TJP shows, mm. even I've, if it's fucking ridiculous. I've only seen, uh, I think, one English commentary show for Noah, um, but I was, you know, I was impressed with uh, both Stuart and Mark. So he also does right, and I'm on his Twitter now. Mm-hmm. And Quintet. Which I don't know, but it has Sakuraba and Josh Barnett in the thumbnail, so it can't be that bad. It strikes me as a shoot based promotion then. Uh, I don't think it's wrestling. Ah, there you go, then it's probably MMA. And also apparently does stuff in UFC Spike Pass. That's good for him. <laughs> he gets everywhere. He does. He's a busy man. Busy man. Um, let's kick into these matches then. So uh, we started um with a gauntlet tag team match, um, which saw the Awida tag team of Fuki and Death and Konami uh, defeat Hanan and Hina, uh, the team of Lady C and Micah, and the other Awida Tai team of Rina and Saki Kashima at 18 minutes and 12 seconds. Uh, Fuki and Death getting the final pinfall over Lady C with the O'Connor roll. Um, Chris, <laughs> what did you think of this? I didn't really think of this at all, to be honest. Like, it, it's an opening tag match to get people people on the card. That's about it. There's nothing much to talk about. Um, I mean, nothing much. I mean, I I have no notes. It was fine. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in it. And I don't think, you know, I don't know whether I set my expectations a little bit too high for an opening gauntlet tag team match with no stakes. With a lot of kill- children, I think if you had expectations, you definitely did set it too high. Well, yeah, it does have children, but then again, it does also have Micah, Konami, Saki. So, you know, there are those points in place. You can't help thinking that, you know, if people like Natsupoi, um, if Himika had been on the card, then maybe we'd have had some different matchups. But we had what we had. Um, unfortunately, the the reason I'm I'm disappointed is from these throwaway tags, from these throwaway openers, you've always got one spot you can talk about. For example, when they did the five-way, which I think was um, either the opener or the second match at Sendai Cinderella um, in front of that wank crowd. Um, get over it. No, get, no, it, I won't get over it, Chris. It's been, it's been almost a year. No, I won't get over it. Um, fucking, ha- fucking hell. Fucking... People have entered new... Babies have been born. <laughs> In the fucking time, you have, like, babies have went from merely a glint in their father's penis to A glint in born. their father's penis? That's not the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, just, that's not the phrase at all. I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly, babies have been born in, in the time... You have been complaining about the crowd on that one Sendai show. My nephew has learned to walk and talk. He says frog like fuck. It's hilarious. Frog like fuck. Yeah, literally, it's like, he, he won't say frog if you ask him to say frog, but if you show him a picture of frog, what's that? What's the fuck? He's trying to say frog, but he can't say his ass properly. It it could count as being mean. But also, is it really mean if we don't know you're being mean? No. No, if you can't understand it, then you're fine. He's two. He can't understand much, to be honest. Um, what was that? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> when they had the five-way at Sendai Cinderella, there was there was one spot. You know, you had either the high-flying of Saya Kamatani or you had the weird um, five-person leg scissors or head scissors, sorry, or something like that. You have one spot to take away from that match. Just something to... This match had nothing. This match nope, had it was... absolutely nothing. The only thing it had was Micah destroying Rena with a Sazanka. Like proper thumping her into the mat. Um but apart from that, there's there's not a lot really, is there? No, it's just kind of fine. It's okay. I'm not gonna think about it ever again after this podcast. I would have loved for Lady C to have won. That was the one thing that I can take from that. I was really invested in Lady C getting the victory at the end. But, you know. We we wouldn't have seen that coming. Really? 
See, she's been around for a year and I haven't made that joke. It's fast fucking restraint. <laughs> um, I gave it two and a half. What did you give it, Chris? I, probably the same. I didn't think enough about it to give it a rating. <laughs> Uh, match two then tag team match which saw the Queen's Quest team of Azumi and Momo Watanabe defeating the Oida Tai team of the brand new repackaged Starlight Kid and Ruaka at uh, 13 minutes and 43 seconds with the Azumi Sushi um, Chris, I have a question oh, you know how like when a it. star dies it collapses in on itself and becomes a black hole can't you be like the black hole kid black hole kid <laughs> Or Black Hole Star, um, Black Hole Sun Kid. Is that just so that she can come out to Soundgarden? Yeah, why not? Be briefly used to come out to what did it bring me the horizon? Yeah, yeah. Um, blasphemy. blasphemy. So um, why not? And Hanny used to come out to um, some remix. Everyone used to have on their phone back in the day. Knife party. Yeah, no, you're going to die. Bam. Um, what do you think of this match, Chris? It was good. It was better. It's better than most Ruaka matches. Um, yeah. The pace never let up. Ruaka played her role as a massive, well, basically a mini Tora. Um, well, Starlight continues to be really good. Um, Azumi and Momo are always good. Some of the spots re- were great, especially between Azumi and Starlight. Um, Starlight fully embracing her other is just made Oedotice one of the best things in, actually, on when it comes to this show, the best thing in um, Stardom. It's just really strong stuff. It's not essential by any stretch of your imagination. Like, I wouldn't tell you to break an appointment to go watch this match. Um, like, But you could do a lot worse than this for the 30 minutes is on. It's the best Ruaka's looks ever probably um which is good going into the five star again starlight continues to be something overtly worth watching and azumi and momo never not deliver on these big shows even when they're not in any position and they're normally not in any position but they always over deliver so good stuff what's your opinion of starlight kids new look oh you mean the the entire repackaging. So, you know, the new music, the new video, the the general movements and things, you know, and the attire, obviously, which was the big striking feature. What was your opinion? Yeah. Normally, first time out on something like this is a bit of a... Um, a like, normally it's a misstep, and then they find their feet. Starlight's found their feet on this one straight away. Like, it still feels like Starlight, just evil. Which is... <clears throat> good. I really like the new mask design, especially the teeth. Big fan of the teeth. Um, she's wearing long trousers now, isn't she? Uh, on one side, yeah. Ah, the Zack Ryder. The Zack Ryder. Or the Momo. Uh, the Momo. The Mayu in about 2016, when she had the one blue leg and then shorts on one. I prefer my interpretation. You prefer the Zack Ryder. If she breaks yeah. out the Rough Rider, go yeah, mental. Be a mate. Yeah, be one of the best moments in all of stardom. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a big fan of the entire repackaging. I thought the video package of just her face and all that stuff going around, I thought that was really good. The new music's great. Um, not the best music of the night. We will get into that. Um, but the way Starlight is sort of playing this cute but will kill you at a moment's notice character is brilliant. Otherwise known as the Chris. Otherwise known as the Chris. Um, I enjoy the psychotic laugh that plays over the top of the music. Um, and basically, how can I pull this? I didn't want her to go all the way into the heel thing. And in this match, she didn't. But then later on, she did. There didn't seem to have been quite enough from Natsu oh, Katora and Awida Tai to push oh, her into mean, being full heel. You mean Saddam's rushing something? Oh, no. Never. I don't want to say that they're rushing it, Chris. It's not that. Because we talked last week about how good the arc for Starlight Kid was. And it is. I've I've enjoyed this transition. And I messaged you, or I put it on Twitter, that this is going to be the start of a fucking mega push for Starlight Kid. Um, And we'll talk a little bit about what's next for Starlight Kid later on in the podcast. But it would not surprise me if this is the start of a 
astronomical push for her. Um, overall, I thought she did really well. The only thing that irked me about this match is why the fuck would you not give Starlight Kid the win here? Um, now, because... I know that you've said because Ruaka's in the match and she's a pin eater. That's fine. That's fine. And in any other situation... I frankly, she didn't, because also Starlight didn't take the pin. The pin isn't direct, a direct result of whatever Starlight does. And no one's talking about the result coming out of this. We're talking about what happened after the white belt match. So, like, really, in the grand scheme of things, is is it ideal? No. Is it trivial? Yeah, kind of. It's not trivial when you consider what happens later on in the show. Yeah, but when it happens later on, but what happens if later on in the show overshadows this? Even so, Stardom had the opportunity. I mean, it's a running joke now. Momo is buried. You know, hashtag. Hashtag Momo buried. She can afford to take a pinfall here, even if Starlight has to cheat to do it. Azumi, the commentary team, the English commentary team, did a fantastic job, especially Sonny, of highlighting the history between Starlight Kid and Azumi and how Azumi couldn't beat Starlight for the future belt, and how Starlight couldn't beat Azumi when it came to the high-speed belt. What a way to get that first pinfall over Azumi by not only having fully transitioned into this heel character, but by cheating to win. It makes her look strong, which is what they clearly want to do, even before, you know, the awfulness at the end of the show. It's clearly what they had in mind. So let her have the win here. Ultimately, would it have hurt Azumi or Momo, who are in no title pitches at the moment, would it have hurt them to eat a pinfall here? You know, say, I don't, I don't know, say Ruaka hits them with the weird vegetable crate that she carries round that looks like it wouldn't hurt even if she swung it as hard as she could. Okay, she does that. Starlight hits the moon salt. win. Azumi or Momo don't look any weaker because they've cheated to lo- uh, cheated to win, and Starlight gets the victory. The focus is on Starlight because, let's face it, despite how fantastic Momo AZ are, the focus wasn't on them in this match. The focus was Starlight Kid. The focus was the full transition of Starlight Kid, the full descent into madness of Starlight Kid, which is highlighted by the video package, which is what I like so much. I just feel like, and it's it might not be a massive thing, and it might be me overlooking it, but even so, I just feel like, especially this show, where it's the first time we've seen this new Starlight Kid, I feel like she should have won. It just it it would it would have made perfect sense. But anyway, that's that's by the by. Um, other than that, the in-ring was good. You're absolutely right, Chris. It is the best we've seen Ruwaka ever. I thought she played off the fact that, you know, you've got Starlight and Azumi and even Momo to a certain extent, you know, performing that higher level um, wrestling, that quicker wrestling, that high-speed wrestling. And then you've got Ruwaka, basically, as you put it, that Tora character, that strong bruiser character, which I'm hoping that she'll grow into as she as she gets older. I gave it three stars, Chris. What about you? I gave it three, and going back to what you said again, I'm not saying it's like the ideal result, but I'd rather Starlight not get a pin here and then get the push she's getting later on in the night, then Momo get pinned and us get asked another fucking question about it. <laughs> we haven't been asked a question in ages about that. Yeah, because we fu- because we started calling that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm not saying that the two are mutually exclusive. I just think it would have been a good way of starting that push. I just think yeah. it would have been the better way. But that's by the by. It's not even, it's not even top 20 of um, Stardom's problems, if we're being completely honest. So. <laughs> um, let's move on then. Match three, the future of Stardom Championship match, the tournament final to crown the new future of Stardom champion from Vacant. Obviously, I have to say, Ida vacated it through injury with Mina Shirakawa defeating Yunagi Sayaka in 16 minutes and 58 seconds with the implant DDT. Um, Chris, thoughts on this? It was a match between Mina Shirakawa and Unagi Sayaka. Um, it was fine. It was nothing special, nothing that's going to pop you. Um, neither person looked actively bad, but also 
neither of them came off as a champion. We'll get on to how sad and disagree with that later on. Um, I don't know. Me, they're both getting better. Like if this match happened even six months ago, I think it would be actively bad. Whereas now it's happening, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's inoffensive. Mm. So that's that's a good trajectory. They're not getting actively worse. <laughs> You'd be worried if they were, to be fair. Honestly, yeah, because what did Nagi have when she first came in? <laughs> like, nothing. She had a really low fan base from her since in TJP. That was about it. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> but, on- yeah, honestly, I have nothing. It's one of those things where so someone probably loved it. In fact, someone, some people gave it a seven. But um, Nagi's offense is hitting harder, which is carrying on from the Micah match last week. Um, the Mina, me in terms of offense, Mina sort of stayed the same. But she, again, she's above where she was. Mm. Like we didn't feel out of place for a rookie belt. But the problem is, we're going to be compared to Micah, Sire, uh, Micah, and the Sires, who are the last generation of future and they were basically all super rookies so it's a bit unfair towards um these two in that respect because it's hard to live up to those three yeah certainly um it did sort of make me cringe a little bit when sonny referred to yanagi as one of the golden stars of stardom um this was a lot i came into this with pretty low expectations um I've not, you know, been quite open about how I've not been overly enamoured with Unagi's matches, um, and she's she's had the odd good match, but she's had the odd good match against someone who has the ability to carry her, um, and I'm I didn't think Mina would be able to do that. However, they put together a more than serviceable match. Certainly, Unagi's best single match singles match since she's been in the company. Um, um no, I think the bank and one for last week's better. Do you think? Yeah. I like this one more, I think. Um, just because the hat... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm eating an orange at the same time. Um, Fucking degenerate. What? Degen- e- eating an orange while on the... Are we eating it into the microphone next? Like the guy from the fucking Lucha meme show. <laughs> um, no, d- the reason is... One of the things that I've hate, not hated, that's a strong word, but hated about Yunagi <laughs> is that she's shown nothing. She's shown no fire, she's shown no desire. She's shown resilience, but there's been no real fire behind her offense. Wasn't fire and desire a team? It was. It was Mandy Rose and Sonia Deville. Yeah. Um, but here, you know, they've had that little fracturous relationship, her and Mina, over the last couple of weeks. Um, there was that great line um, in the press conference where Mina said that Yunagi is like someone who sleeps away to the top. thought that was a little bit unfair. Um, but even so, they there was that little fire between them. And if this was just a normal singles match, you'd have Yunagi sleepwalking through her match, which she started to do. However, here, I feel like there was a little story beat. You know, both women wanted to have that championship, that first singles championship. Now, don't forget, this is Mina's first ever match for a singles championship. Mm -hmm. So she wants to be the one who is basically the first out of the two. It's almost like a race between the two. Who can be the first one to get that singles title? She doesn't think Unagi's worthy. She's made it a point that she doesn't think Unagi's worthy. Um, but in this match, Unagi surprised her with the fire that she brought out, with the aggression she brought out, as though, and I think I put this on Twitter as well, both women were willing to bench their friendship if it meant that they would come out of this match with the championship. And I thought that because we saw another level to Yanagi that wasn't just base Yanagi, that infinitely makes this better. Infinitely makes this better. And the closing stretch was actually pretty decent. Um, you know, Mina making sure that she polishes off Yanagi with two implant DDTs makes Yanagi look strong in defeat. 
Um, Yunagi's offense, like you said, was a lot crisper. It was hitting a lot harder, which is my main issue with Yunagi, amongst others. So here, she did a good job. The right person won. Um, we'll get into what Yunagi gets for losing this match in a moment. Um, but yeah, I gave it three stars, Chris. What did you give it? Two, three, got a three. It was fine. Yeah, it was it was inoffensive. They did nothing wrong, and it surpassed my expectations. Yeah, but my expectations were going to stink up the joint. <laughs> exactly, yeah. When you go like, in with low expectations. Gonna be, my expectations were it's going to be the worst match on the card, when in reality it's only the third worst match on the card. I think that's harsh. Um, I mean, like, there's six matches on the card. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Um, so post-match, um, Mina offers a hand, Yunagi refuses to shake it, um, says that she, well done for winning, but I want to be the next in line, basically when you defend your championship. You said you want to defend your championship, I want to be the next in line, which is absolutely not how it works, you've just lost. But Mina, who apparently in her infinite wisdom is now matchmaker, said, I'll tell you what, why don't you go for the belt that is hierarchical above mine? And if you win that, then you can come and challenge for the future of Stardom Championship. And that that was that. The, Unagi, thing, I love about, the thing I love about Stardom is how logical it is. So Yunagi lost the future of Stardom Championship match and is now somehow the number one contender to Suri's SWA Championship. Falling upwards. What the fuck? Yeah, falling upwards, it's weird, isn't it? That's... What? That's nonsensical. I wish I could fall upwards like Unagi. Imagine that. I can get, like, fired and then go to... I don't know. Be the head of France or something. I could run France. There's a lot of people disgruntled. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter who are disgruntled. People on our Discord who are disgruntled with how big a push Cosmic Angels are getting, with Yunagi, the fact that she's already the artist of Stardom Champion. She's had two shots at the future belt. She's now going for the SWA belt. It's almost as blatant as for DDM stuff last year. The the monster push that they're getting, and the fact that, not to be horrible, but you you look at the artist of Stardom title matches, and to put it bluntly, it's Tam and Baggage. Tam carries the matches... Mina does some things, and Yunagi is also there. That's that's sort of how they feel, and it seems to be a sort of cut, rinse, repeat formula with them at the moment. Now, if this is an indication of where we're going with Cosmic Angels, then there's going to be improvement. You know, if they're going to continue having a friendly rivalry between Mina and Yunagi, that's a unique dynamic between them, and I think that could bring a little bit of intensity to their matches. Um, but if they just continue with Yunagi gets the shit beaten out of her, Tam Bales are out, then, you know, I'm not surprised people are getting annoyed, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's pretty unsurprising that people are getting a little bit disgruntled with the push of Cosmic Angels. And unfortunately, Yunagi seems to be bearing the brunt of that because of, you know, who she's taking over. In, uh, in the... Old pecking order. Let's move on then, Chris. Let's move on to the Goddess of Stardom title match with champions ALK defeating Magma, Kaguma, and Mayu Watani in 20 minutes and 42 seconds after Julia Pinkaguma with a Northern Lights bomb. This was great, Chris. This is very good. Um, Koguma showed a lot of... I was about to say spunk, but I'd probably get pulled up. <laughs> um, a lot of heart. Thought, it, it was a very gutsy performance from Kogma. She that was kind of, she was she's been spending the last month getting her um ring rust shaken off. So she can now finally add these narrative elements, and turns out she's quite good at these narrative elements. She didn't falter at any point. There was no real Barches, although um, Julia doing the top rope octopus was a fucking show of faith, doing that to a rookie. <laughs> do we still well, cla- do we still count Kaguma as a rookie? Don't forget, you know, she's been out of the yes. ring for six years. Yes, but... yeah, I'm, I'm count. I think that's long enough to because it's not like someone like um, Daniel Bryan coming back after several years, and he was previously the best in the world. She was 
she had um less than eighty matches before and then went away and came back. So I think it's been long enough that I can kinda of count her as a rookie. Okay. Like diet rookie. Rookie without the shame of being a rookie. <laughs> rookie light. Yeah. Um would you like to tell the people how you describe Julia? <laughs> um yeah, when they came out, uh ALK uh, with their daft punk masks, um, I thought that Julia looked like Ziggy Stardust. And why did you think that? Because orange. Did you think of no other orange thing? Couldn't, no. There was no other orange thing that crossed my mind, so Ziggy Stardust went straight for Ziggy Stardust. However, I just thought Power Rangers, to be honest. You just thought Power It was a bit like when um, the Gorillas of Destiny came out in those helmets for the first time at Wrestle Kingdom 13. Oh, aye. Um, it was a little bit like that, but... Imagine if it came out like the grill is a destiny. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine Julia as a Tabatonga, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the best section of this match were the exchanges with Shiri and May, May obviously. Yeah. They have very good com- chemistry. Um, people saying it was calling back to their match. I think people are fanficking that rivalry into being bigger than it is. We had one match. Um, Julia, as always, holds around. She's a Great presence. Her backdoor drivers are sickening. Oh, so um, as a so Northern Lights bomb, I much prefer her current offense to um, stuff like the Julia driver, which was a which well kind of looked cool, was a tiny bit convoluted. But then we have a uh, something like the Northern Lights bomb, which can come out of nowhere and is about as devastating. You still drop and boom their heads. Mm. So really good stuff. Um, and the match was just, it was a simple tag formula. They worked over Koguma, May got Shine in before they started beating up Koguma again. And it's simple, but it worked. It created a, well, DDM aren't necessarily heels. There's not really a massive heel face divide in stardom. Um, Julian and Shiri took the roles to practical heels and played it well. They, the free tenured work has worked very well around Koguma's strength. So, just really good stuff all around. Mm. Um, between this, their matches against Momo AZ and their matches against MK Sisters, ALK are fast becoming one of my favourite things about Stardom. Yeah, but they, they've had not had a, this is the best match we've had for the title so far. The other two they had were also very good with Queen's Quest and um, Mayo and Starlight. And then the, the, the last we say about the match will be one without the better. Um, yeah, they're they're really really solid. Yeah, like they're gelling more and more as a team. Um, and we stand up for the rest of DDM because they dress like we're about to go fishing. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole point of ALK is that madness, isn't it? So I think it's high energy madness. It stands for. Pa- um, um, Julia as a bold person hasn't been as powerful as I was hoping she would be. I was hoping she'd be joining the Akiyama Muto Revolution. She's not but, putting over anyone over. No, um, but I, I do like the orange. I'm a fan of orange. The, Nao Namora, not Nao Namora, wrong, completely wrong person. Um, Naomi Yoshimura wants his look back, but otherwise. <laughs> um, no, I, I enjoyed this match immensely. Um, I thought Kaguma was the MVP. Um, how we went from the start and Julian no-selling Kaguma's offense as though she wasn't worthy, um, you know, you've been gone, what are you doing in my ring sort of thing? And then we transitioned into Kaguma being that fiery underdog baby face when they isolated her away from Mayu. Um, and then eventually just the resilience that uh, Kaguma had right at the very, very end before eventually she was she was ground down by Julia. For a, for everything, the exchange between Mayu and Suri were fantastic. There were little callbacks to their match in Osaka, um, not Osaka, sorry, um, in Yokohama last time. There were little callbacks, um, but Mayu and Suri weren't in there long enough for it to be an extended thing. They were just little callbacks, whereas the main narrative of this story was Kaguma trying to prove that even after six years, she could still hang with people like Julia, like Suri. Um you know, because everyone just assumes that she's late Mayu's latest pet project. Um and Mayu's just gone through this thing where she's lost Starlight Kid, though we'll 
get into that at the end of the pay-per-view. Um, she's lost Starlight, so maybe she feels a little bit of, you know, I've got to prove myself, you know, I'm the new Starlight kid. I've got to prove that I'm as good as Starlight kid. I've got to prove myself to Mayu. Um, she's brought me in as this secret weapon for stars. I can't let her down. So there's that fire in her, and then obviously that sort of manifests as the match goes on. Um, but it's not enough, and ultimately Julia and Suri put her away. Um, we are going to get ALK versus Aphrodite, which is going to be an absolutely outstanding match. Seen that, should as- be a, that should be very good, yeah. I might actually give uh, make you time me look like a star for once. Well, give give it time. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, overall, this was... This was my favourite match on the show. I gave it four yeah, and a quarter. This is, this is match of the night for me, first that. Right. So before we kick into the semi-main and the main event, we then had a video package announcing the five-star Grand Prix and the blocks of the five-star Grand Prix. Now, these are obviously subject to change, and if you haven't seen the show already, you'll find out at the end of the podcast why. Um, but the blocks are as follows. I'll go through the blocks and then I'll go through the dates. Um, We'll talk a little bit about the five-star, but I want to leave that until after we've reviewed the pay-per-view and then we'll talk a little bit about the five-star afterwards. So in the red block, we have got Julia, Momo Watanabe, Natsu Katora, Saki Kashima, Starlight Kid, Natsupoi, Himika, Koguma, Mina, and Mayu Iwatani. And then in the blue block, uh, we've got Yutami, Siori, Tam Nakano, Sayaka Matani, Mika, Azumi, Ruaka, Konami, Yunagi, and then a mystery entrant. Now, I know Lone Saber on Twitter has asked if we think that that is going to be Jungle Kiona. Uh, no, I don't. No, not at all. I'd, um, I, say, I, I actually text Chris um, as the blocks were announced, and I said, I know that she was definitely not going to be on because she's still out injured. I knew that it was, she wasn't going to be yeah, on, but like there was it, a little bit of disappointment she when she wasn't the, announced. She was on the matinee a month ago for Hannah. Yeah. And um, handle with care may as well have been stamped all over her. Yeah. Absolutely. Like she's still very clearly fragile. Yeah, absolutely. So no, I don't think she will. Um, I'd be surprised if we see her before November. I'd be very, mm-hmm. very surprised. I'd, I'd be honestly, even if, if we went past the end of the year and she wasn't back, I wouldn't be at all shocked. No, Jungle is tremendous. Make sure she is a hundred percent fit before we bring her back. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to lose another wrestler. No. Um, so they've also announced, and they announced these a couple of days ago, but they gave us um, the rundown of the dates as well. I'm only going to run through these really, really quickly. So we start on the 31st of July. And that is going to be in Yokohama, Budokan, where this pay-per-view is held. And then the following dates are the remainder of the block matches. 1st of August, 7th of August, 8th of August. Uh, Then we've got the 9th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 21st and 22nd of August. Uh, 28th and 29th of August. And then in September, we run the 4th, 5th, 6th, 11th and 12th, 18th, 20th, 23rd with the final at Tokyo O Toward City Gymnasium, which is where Tokyo Dream Cinderella was held. That will be on the 25th of the 9th, so 25th of uh, September. Now, in terms of matches that we're looking forward to, you know, little fantasy booking nuggets, who we think is going to win, you know, who we think is going to be the block finals, things like that, we'll come to at the end. Um, I want to get through the rest of the pay-per-view first because we've had a couple of questions about the five-star. Um We'll have a look at a couple of the tour dates um, going forward, and then we'll go on to that, if that's all right, Chris. Yeah. So next, we move on to the semi-main event, which was the Wonder of Stardom title match with Tam Nakano, the champion, defeating Saya Kamatani in 22 minutes and 27 seconds with the Tiger Suplex. Um, now, Chris, um, I know that you've got a lot to say on this, and I'm just going to let you go in a minute. Um, I will just say I have watched it again this morning. Um, just Come because on. of the just because of the discourse surrounding it, 
So the capital D discuss. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about it because, like I put on Twitter, I'm a little bit conflicted about this match. But Chris, off you go. Star Wars Episode Two: Texas Chainsaw Massacre Remake. For the Dark World, X Men Last Stand, X Men Apocalypse, Batman Killing Joke, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, The Incredible Hulk from the MCU, X Men Origins Wolverine. These are the bottom matches on last year's movie list, and I would rather watch any of them than this match. I didn't like this match. I didn't like it at all. There was very little to sink your teeth into. It was. Soulless. It was like an NXT main event at NXT's worst. It felt like we had a checkbox of epic tropes to tick off and we were just going through them. And they didn't even do them well. Like we had the limb targeting in um time going for Saya's injured ribs and Saya sold it in the same way that she sells her arm in tag matches, and that's not at all. Um the slaps were weak fucking at sauce. And I mean, when I say that, the camera was like half a mile out and you could still see we weren't connecting. It was like laughably bad slaps. There was the build. I, I'm going to be generous and say there was a build. It wasn't a good build. It was barely a build. And then Stardom just expected people to fill it in with fan fiction of, oh, this was destined to happen for years. Tam and Sire have... um. Te- were together when Sire first came into stardom. This is destined to happen. When in reality, since then, they've been basically kept apart. I've never, I can't recall any meaningful, um, any meaningful interactions they had. But we, we would have met in last year's five star because we were in the same block, weren't they? Mm-hmm. So that happened. Nothing there suggested something deeper, but that's fine. That's the five star. But Tam as um, I think Belkis pointed out on Twitter, is someone who needs that investment. And it's true. Unless Tam's going 10 minutes, you need the investment in that match. You look at her best matches, her a recent match, her Julia match, her even like her just good matches, like the Natsupoi match from um, the last Yokohama show. They needed, you need that build. You need a reason for Tam to get emotional because that's basically all she has going for her. She especially if she's going over twenty minutes, which she did here, and I don't know. There's stuff here. Have you ever watched Red Terry Pratchett? Yes. Um, you know how Death's daughter described Death as. I don't think he's ever felt sorry for me. He's fought sorry for me. It yeah, kind. Have, it's yeah. kind of like that. You think this is a good match, rather than you feel this is a good match. Because it's clinical, it's paint by numbers. It's yes, sir. Uh, you can have one epic off the shelf. Here you go. Nothing. It's what I detest in wrestling when people just go for formula and hope it works. I I despise this match. There's nothing like even like there's is good stuff. Like Tam and Saya are at their core. Good, there were some decent dives. Tam's attempt at the limb targeting at the start could have been good if Saya had held up her end of a bargain, which she didn't at all, because selling isn't anything to do with just rubbing the affected area and moving on. It was all fine. It, like, it was all like fine, all the good stuff, and the rest of it was actively bad, actively annoying. I have nothing good to say about this match. I watched it again this morning, and the reason oh, I watched right. it again this morning um, was I watched it last night, and obviously there was a discourse around, and there was certainly a disconnect around those people that really liked it and those people that really hated it. This is effectively, apparently, a Marmai match because there is nobody that thought it was demonstrably fine. You know, you either loved it or you despised everything about this match. Um, I fall <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Now, after I watched it last night, um, I was I was disappointed with Sire's selling. I thought it went too long for the story they were trying to tell. Um, it suffered 
from the build. And, you know, we spoke about this last time. We know that Sai Kamatani was out for the two shows preceding this, but there was four beforehand, and they phased off once. However, they built up more to the future match when we built up to this. Exactly. However, I can't dispute those points. Those points are there. I can't dispute that. However, there is a nugget of story there. There is a nugget of story there, and that story is Saya not being able to surpass Tam. And that but- story is something that you can work within this story. Was it told perfectly? No, it wasn't. I, don't, I, w- I would argue it wasn't even told well. It's something you're meant to confer by the fact that these two have a history. But then that history was never really brought up in the build, so it's not verbalized text in this it's like when we bring out Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens in WWE and just expect you to think it's heated because they have previous. See, I disagree. They built towards it, but there was no crescendo towards it. So there, you look at the start where they're reversing each other's moves. Okay, it's something very, very simple, yet it sort of talks about how, you know, well, they're very familiar with each other, having tagged with each other as well. So you've got that. The limb targeting was perfect to start with. Tam did a really good job of manipulating Saya into really uncomfortable looking positions, driving her elbow into those ribs. Saya, the first time she did the dive and then she went down holding her ribs and had, was down for a while. That was great. That was perfect selling, but it stopped. And that was the thing. It wasn't, nothing was consistent for me in this match. Now, there was the bit at the start a lull in the middle, and then I'm going to talk about the end because there were bits I really liked about the end and there was bits that I really didn't like about the end. Now, in terms of the end, both women kick out of each other's finishes. Now, that says a lot about Saya's determination, her determination to be better than Tam, her determination to not only be level with Tam, as proved by the post-match, but to surpass her. She doesn't want to be in the shadow of Tam, in the shadow of Utami anymore. She wants to surpass Tam, and that is enough to drive her to the kickout. Now, she hits Star Crusher, and Tam kicks out. Now, that, on its own, I don't have an issue with. Someone's going to have to kick out of Star Crusher at some point. Um, I think Utami managed to... Did she get... She managed to get to the ropes, didn't she, for Star Crusher, I think? Um, um, Budokan. Oh, so, yeah. But nobody has kicked out of this move yet. Now, I don't mind this because Tam and Saya, Tam was her mentor. It's sort of poetic that Tam is the one that kicks out of the Star Crusher. But nothing was made of it. Saya should have been devastated. Saya should have been literally on all fours, no idea what to do next. I, I think that sort of encapsulates my issue. Like, there's hints of something there. But Sardom is expecting you to fill in the gaps to compensate for their lack of build. You know what this reminds me of? Go on. Is Tai Chi versus Okada from last year. Where mechanically, sure, most things are fine. May like th- this match wasn't botchy, with the exception of the slaps, everyone hit their moves relatively well. But I don't give a fuck. Um like it feels like this is how we wrestle because it's put into an AI and they wrestle like that by design. No, I get that. I I do get that and I understand that. And like that's my worst thing that's the worst thing in wrestling. Like I look at some of my and it's something I'm finding more and more in my old age. That <laughs> Fuck um <laughs> it's something I'm finding more and more that I like I prefer matches with an identity than I do to these kind of Epic. It's sort of why I'm starring on Ishii matches because a lot of Ishii matches don't have their own identity anymore. Mm. Um, whereas I look at something like I'm just consuming a thread. Na- like um, take the Noah match from last year um, between from last year from last um, the other week rather between Nakajima and Masa. Where with was it? as well wrestled as some as something like a Tai Chi versus a card, probably not. Like it's fairly rough and tumble, couple bot couple bot cheers for headbutts were disgusting. But like there's an identity there, there's something to cling on to. Same with say um Miyahara versus Jake Lee, 
was it their most real wrestle match? No, but that through line of Kento um dry heaving because the his guts are being targeted gives it something to hang on to. Uh Charlie Evans versus Jessica Troy, the leg stuff into Charlie Evans being um edgy gives it something to hold on to. Whereas here it's just epic spots for epic like a lot of stardom matches have the slap off. A lot of stardom matches have the big exchange of finishes. This is if I were to, if you were to tell tell Fire Pro to do a stardom style main event, this is what would come out. Mm. And that's fine for something like the five star or the Cinderella. Because A, that's not gonna hurt your total too much. It would just be another decent match in a um good run in the tournament. When it's on a big stage like this, you need something to cling on to. A nothing title match is damn near unforgivable on something like this, especially for someone as hyped as Tam. You know, like, um, because that's one thing Tam's good at. She can layer a story. Because you look at look at the Julia match from Budokan. If that story wasn't there, that heat wasn't there, that urgency wasn't there, that match would be a hot mess. Hmm. Which this match kind of was because they didn't have their narrative elements in place. It's like it was, it's like a script that was rushed out on first draft. It's like a, um, it's like when you've handed in your homework two minutes before, um, it was you. There's hints of potential there, sure, but it's not there. They've missed the mark on like on every aspect you can judge a big title match on build on action on um emotion on heat i don't think it ticks really any of those boxes for me because if, if i want good action with no um context i'll just go watch highlights video on youtube that's not why i come to wrestling i agree with everything you've said and you know we had a chat yesterday over what's happened everything about this match and you know the slaps are awful <laughs> i mean there's sometimes when exchanges like that happen you can play it off as exhaustion and i think that's what they were going for but that's not how it came off at all yeah, it just came off I, as I would, weak slaps i would somewhat subscribe to that theory if they weren't moving their head for the slaps yeah like uh, it, it, we were bobbing back and forth like a child like it like it was proper theater kid shit it's like watching a poorly edited movie at that point. Like, the fact that we, we changed the angle a few times during the slap exchange. We couldn't find one angle that made those slaps look bad. See, and at that the point, thing is, it, the exchange itself was terrible, but then, about two or three minutes later, you've just got the single slaps, and that was great. You yeah, know, you've got... Slaps work, look, work fine. And it's funny, because we went into slaps and chops in the main event, and, like, that really put V to shame. Yeah, like it's it's weird because Tam can work stiff. We've seen it in like a a recent match, even in a Mayo match from Five Star last year in a Julia matches, but she didn't here. She was almost pulling her punches. And it look here's the thing: I can understand not disliking this match on the level that I do or some of us do. Because honestly, the way, reason I hate this match is like a, is a specific to the way that I enjoy wrestling. Mm. Whereas, um. But I can't agree with people calling this a match of the year contender. I can't agree with the majority of people on cage match giving this a 9 out of 10. No, I I am in agreement with you there. It's not a match of the year for me. Um, however, like are, I don't hate like it as are, much as you by any stretch. It feels like people are giving it a match of the year moniker because stardom is... This, uh, I'm not going to say emerging because it's been on the precipice for a while now, but it's quickly becoming a prestige wrestling thing, like what New mm. Japan is, like what Noah was, like what All Japan was. And people don't want to be the... No one wants to be the person to say, nah, they, they fucked up. And, bit, and like, I, as you said, you agree with me, on basically every level, this match fucked up, this match failed. Oh, uh, what they wanted to achieve. Because, I'm going to be frank, going into any TAM match going forward, I'm going to be apprehensive after this, coming into any Saiyan match going forward, I'm going to be apprehensive on, on it. See, that I disagree with. We've had enough from both women. No, with TAM, no, here's the thing. With TAM, for me, it's taken away 
my confidence for her to pull a match out of thin air, I should say. Like, she can, you look at, with the exception of short sprints, it's, I don't think she's someone who can do something without a build, can do something great without a build or without a story. Like, how long did it take her and Julia to work out their cadence enough to be something great? It, t- it took a few months, and then really it took until Budokan for it to become fully realized. No, because they had a match at Yokohama. That was good. That was good. It it was good. But, but again, that, I'm saying that was... Um, that happened, and it was good. It was very good. I, four and a quarter, I believe I gave it. It was a very good match. But it took them, what, six months to get to that. And then it took them a year to get to the heat level of heat that they wanted. Sam needs time to build something, and we didn't take... and. I think this match shown it because with Nat's point, they took the time, we built shit. We put layers in there, we actually actively called back to their days and other promotions. Not really. Not not really though. Not more than, not we, more than the... we fucking did here. Well, that's the thing. This is what I'm gonna ask you now. This isn't gonna be the end for these two. No. So do you think and again, I didn't like the match as much as some other people did. I didn't hate it anywhere near as much as you did, but I'm very much in the middle. But if this is the first step in a wider story, like you've just said, we talked about Tam and Julia. We talked about their match, their feud, being the stardom cast feud of the year. It started slowly. And in fact, I believe their first match in the white belt tournament, it was okay. It wasn't it, great. It, it was, was way too long. Exactly. It was okay. And we were actually full of criticism for that match. And actually, the conversation that we're having here for the Sayakamatani match reminds me very much of the conversation that we had regarding do, that Julia match. I do honestly think they're slightly different circuits. For example, Tam, um, Julia was a lot more established than... Sire, and they didn't try to um, say that this went back years. I think that's probably the reason they don't like it. It's like the pretense of booking instead of actually booking, whereas they would actually had to build something out of complete thin air, out of yeah. Julia. I think and, the booking's done them dirty in that respect. Yeah, and like I have no, I have faith that these two will one day meet down the line with a better build and it will be a lot better than this, and I will really enjoy it. If this is the first step of something bigger, it's a misstep. Mm -hmm. They need to pick themselves up, identify what went wrong, and do better. Yeah. Now... Like, like, let me put it this way. I don't think there's any way this feud could go that would retroactively make this first step good. No, I agree. Um, like sort of like how I'm trying to think of a. You know, can you think of a series where the first ep- the first series or so was bad, but then like the rest of it was so good that everyone forgets about the bad first season? Yeah, Rock Austin. Rock uh, Austin but... WrestleMania 15 wasn't very good. No, it wasn't. But also, I think that was better built. To be fair, it was better built. That, but you I know, mean, if, if, if we're going if we're going build, <laughs> if we're going build, then. Yeah, they were done dirty by the fact that they weren't booked against each other uh, v- barely at all. Long term, I guess I would rather have something start bad and get good rather than exactly. start good and get bad. I would rather have um, an original trilogy than a Disney trilogy. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, Chris, what you got to remember is even, and we gave it four and a half, by the way, I'm just looking at the um, Stardom cast match ratings, which you can access at www.podmania.co.uk or at the top of my Twitter thread. Um, the thing is, no matter how good that match was, we don't go back to their match at Corican and go, fucking hell, yeah, looking back on it, that was a great match. Because it wasn't. Cor- Corican is a. Is this for. Julia? Is- no, this is for Julia and Sire. Uh, sorry, yeah. Julia and Tam is what I mean. So. No, I'm sure. But again, we didn't. With. It didn't annoy me in the Julia Tam case because they didn't have some pretense of this has been building for years, just filling the gaps yourself. Which then, I know, I know it becomes a discourse problem, but then it has people on their high horse going, "Well, this stretches back for years," and like, really, no, because these two have not had basically any interaction since. Yeah, 
Well, um, fingers so, crossed well, that's what's going to happen. It's going to build yeah. on it. They're going to analyze. Like you said, they're going to pit themselves up. They're going to analyze, you know. Oh, well, I hope they do. I, yeah. I, I'm not, I, I've been burned enough by wrestling company to know that this isn't assumed going to happen. Again, this isn't the end of Saya. I think, because as we saw with her Tammy match, she is good at making a match out of nothing. Just Tam can't really do that, especially at this time. Because you look at a bit, like, you look at Saya's best matches, a lot of them are picking shit out of nothing. Whereas with Tam, all her best matches, like that recent match we built that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, the Julia matches after the first one, we built that for a long time. The um, Kagetsu match, that actually had previous and um, emotion to draw off of. Mm. And even like the Starlight match from earlier in the year, that came with a backdrop of um, her defected from stars, her stuff to hold on to. Whereas with Saya, we were really cl- like they were. Uh, you can agree we were absolutely clutching at straws. Let me ask you a question then, and then we'll move on from this. If before this, it in those future, six weeks, but as it, it, if this was to leave here, it would be a shit footnote in stardom history. No, no, no. If if before this match that they had on this pay per view, if before that they'd faced off three, maybe even four times in the build to this. And they'd highlighted their history. They'd highlighted Saya's need to surpass Tam. And uh, then had this match, would exactly you still my... hate it? Um, I wouldn't hate it on the level that I do now. Right. If, if I had this exact match, I still wouldn't think it's a good match because it's not good. It's like, if, even when you strip away all my problems with the build, which only amplifies my problems with this match, this match isn't very. Good, because uh, if it, if it wasn't for the build, I'd be complaining more about Sire's selling. I'd be complaining more about how the finishing stretch was just kind of weird to me, mm. and how some like some big moves sort of came out of nowhere with no pomp and circumstance. Like, and I'd be complaining that, if, like, there's lots of problems in this match where if um something shifted, I still have a problem. I wouldn't be as militant against it as I am now. No, but I wouldn't like it. Okay. Now, as I said, this isn't a case of like Utami and Shiri, uh, Shiri, where the outside um, factors inhibited what was otherwise an incredible match. Okay. Now, I would ask you what you rated it, but well, no, I'm going to ask you what did you rate it? Um, two. I didn't like it at all. Wow. See, I I ended up giving it three and three quarters. That's up from your initial... It is. I watched it again this morning. And, you know, maybe I am reading into it too much. But, you know... I I think that just became a pet peeve of mine being in New Japan discourse for so long because, you you know yourself, it's so common for people in in those spaces who just create fan fiction to make whatever New Japan's doing work. It's it's not localized to New Japan. WWE are absolutely fucking shocking oh, for it. Every, no, don't get me wrong. This isn't a um, stardom or New Japan specific problem. This it's is wrestling. Name a re- yeah, that, that's the problem. They but it, but it goes beyond sort of death of the author. They're interpreting what's on the screen. I think in this case, people who are looking at the stuff going years back, I think they're interpreting what they want the story to be rather than what the story is. Mm. Right, let's move on then to the main event, um, which was the World of Stardom Championship match, uh, where the champion Utami defeated Natsukatora by referee's decision um, in 11 minutes and 33 seconds. Let's get this out of the way. Um, Unfortunately, Natsukatora, during the match, came off the apron to do a double stomp and twisted a knee. Um, The referee opted to stop it, which... In hindsight, it was a very good idea. As it turns out, she's torn her ACL and is likely going to be out for 12 months. Um, now, not only is this a devastating shame for Tora, who, you know, she is the heelist of heels, and yet I'm tearing up at the end of this. I'm tearing up at her promo, her screaming at Utami, you know, her literally crying into Saki's arms. I'm I'm devastated for her. I'm absolutely devastated for her. And um Armani Shoe Extreme made a great point on Twitter. It highlights that it's not only 
um you know the grind of wrestling you know the the amount of dates you work that mean you get injured it's little freak accidents like this and this was a freak accident she just landed funny and you can see it happen and it's awful it truly is awful of course this means that Tora is going to miss the five star um and it looks like you know <laughs> she might even miss the five star next year depending on how serious the injury is um I think what else bothers me in regards is because this match, it was everything I wanted it to be. In those 11 minutes, I loved what I was seeing. It was shaping up to be an absolute fucking banger. These two women beat the living piss out of each other. Big match Torah showed up. And by the way, I referenced the fact that Starlight Kids wasn't the best music of the night. Fucking hell did Natsuka Tora's music fit an arena. Holy shit. She felt massive when she came in. She was dressed like Kagetsu. I'm sure that wasn't a fluke. She felt huge. She felt like an actual threat. Utami came out, and I have never seen her as more of a champion as I saw in this entrance. That aura of her seems to grow with every single entrance. You know, putting her dodgy booking in the build aside, putting this feud's dodgy booking aside, um, for a moment, these two looked like they were going to put on a fucking belter of a match. A real belter. And unfortunately, you can't do anything about it. It's a complete freak accident, Chris. Um, yeah, it's a Dying, it's this isn't a web term. Like this is one of those things that could just happen at any time. It does remind you that these people, these um wrestlers, they put a lot just to entertain us. Absolutely. Um, well, and I think that's a sentiment that can get lost behind people using it in bad faith to derail criticism, mm. which is a shame because it's true and should be acknowledged, especially when something like this happens. Because it's not like um, this match started off bad and then it's just compounded by an ACL injury. This match was fucking great. Oh, but it was amazing. I didn't expect I didn't expect Tora to go fucking full mount. Um, and then as soon as Utami starts slapping her back, she's like, well, probably not a fucking good idea. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea at all to um, to annoy her. The fucking double leg takedown? What the fuck? Where's that Torah been? Yeah. Holy it's, shit! And, like, it wasn't a bad one either. It was, no, like, an actual... It looked it, it amazing! Isn't like, um, it isn't like Okada or Ibushi strain of technical wrestling where we just flail for the nearest limb. <laughs> it's like it was actual like grappling it was great and then like because the th- it's so hard to go into a full mount and make it look like you actually earned your way into that mount and she did it and then um when utami gets into the strikes that's such a concession on her part she's normally the technical um leader at the start of these matches even against shiri she was 50 50 mm her going into the slap the chop exchange that was such a concession on her part that's a great story beat and then because tor is in her head she can start fucking about like the rose in her mouth before the slap oh, that was fucking great i loved that the fact that this she is... baited momo out beat her down with a cane stole her rose and put it in her mouth she felt oh. like such a heel this felt like a, such a coming out party for tori because all those things um we thought they were missing like the uh the the shoddy urgency. booking. It was the shoddy booking well, of Oida tie. It's not just the booking because um I don't think something like a match with Julia was beyond saving. Oh at that well. point with the booking. <laughs> but like but they went for comedy in that match and it yeah, was a weird it choice. Was, it was the wrong choice. Completely the wrong so choice. It. She felt vicious. She felt like the head of a vicious heel faction to the blast yeah, I mean, last this time last year, she was an unwatchable afterthought. We actively and, skipped their matches. Yeah, I actively skipped the other time matches and rude every five minute shit show I had to watch him a five star because you knew it was going to be a DQ. Yeah, whereas Tora hit here, she 
if she, some people were rolling their eyes at a Toro defense in the same way they were rolling their eyes at a B Priestley defense. Is why I've stopped um, doubting Itami because even if there's no build, and let's be frank, here there was next, like all the build was backstage um, that no one saw. Which I must admit, and this is something we I did mean to say earlier, the for the lack of build which we had, and it's pretty inexcusable. The video packages were great. Yeah, the video packages did a good job, and like, but there was actual actual interaction. Like Tora attacked um, Utami backstage. There was stuff to go off here. Yeah, absolutely. There was far I mean, more than the white belts it transpired. Yeah, and that it's so weird because like she did several big spots to Tora, and the thing that done her in was a bad, um, a bad jump off the apron. Mm. Not <sighs> even from the turnbuckle, from the apron, and it's such a shame. And. I remember I, I was watching him in Discord and I laughed up about thinking, oh yeah, that's going to hurt someone. And then <laughs> yeah. it was... It was just innocuous is the best way to describe it. Yeah, it's so bad when this happens on such a routine move. Well, it's the like thing how, is, uh... Chris, you just done a frog splash through a table off, yeah. the, off the top turnbuckle yeah, and so was but... fine. Yeah. Like this is there's no way you could prepare to come up, come down as hard as she did there. Like it's not even like she came off from a large height and did this. She came up from what three foot in the air. Not even that. Jumped she up. she barely jumped. That's the thing. Yeah, she she basically yeah, dropped. Um, and it's such a shame because honestly, I think Toro. I wouldn't have been surprised if Toro won here the way this match was going. Genuinely. I was thinking the exact same thing. The way Awida Tai are being booked at the moment, it would not surprise me if Tora won. And it wouldn't I, anger me. It wouldn't annoy Especially me. Especially after the match thing. like this. Because this match felt so different from the other Utami matches. And can we just take a moment? Just I know we say it every time, but how fucking good is Utami? She's so she oh, every little bit of star power that stardom deprives her of, she brings back by just how cool she is. Honestly, she comes out and everything from her music, her entrance robe, the charisma she carries with her, the way she stands on that turnbuckle and, you know, does the thing with the rose and she just feels like a big deal. And then she comes out and she delivers nonstop. She delivers without fail. And Stardom have put her with Micah. And everyone was like, oh, well, Micah's doing really well, but effectively she's a rookie. Really great match. And I know you didn't like it as much as I did, but really, really great match. Sai Kamatani, loads of people rolled their eyes at that. They put on what would have been match of the night on any other show. It just so happened to be Stardom's best show of the year. <laughs> Pardon me. B Priestley, you yourself have just said, how many people went, off oh, for fuck's sake, B Priestley in this match? Yeah, I actively said fuck off B when she came out yeah, to exactly. challenge. Exactly. And then she put on a fucking belter of a match. Yeah. Suri, like match of the year. For you. Well, for <laughs> quite possibly the vast majority of Stardom fans. But then this match, which was, you're absolutely right, completely different. Had a this completely match, different dynamic. And it had such, uh, it had a unique voice. It had a unique off his vo- Like, it it had its own cadence. This didn't have the same cadence as, in, as a Stardom main event normally would. And honestly, the way it was going, this might have been my favourite match of her reign. It wouldn't surprise me, Chris, if this was going under 20 minutes anyway. Yeah. Uh, Like, I wouldn't surprise... Like, uh, if this was a blitz, I wouldn't be surprised. If this was, like, a quick blitz through Tami and then she builds herself back up through the five-star or something. It's such a shame. There's so many... Like, I don't think there's a bad way this match could have gotten gone because if Tora loses, it's business as usual. If Tora wins... Brave New World kind of thing. I don't think it was a bad way to go about this. And that's so rare for stardom nowadays. And then through no fault of anyone, it fuck it's so bad because I can't even you, you want like when something shit like this happens, it's human nature, you want to point your finger at something. Yeah. But there's nothing to point your finger at in this case. No. Like nothing at all. It it's not bad booking, it's not people not being safe, it's it's the most innocuous injury. And it it's stuff like this always reminds me. I um we had a football final and the day before it was like the really prestigious final, loads of football scouts were gonna be there and I was like, oh this is this is the match. And I leant over to get the remote and I pulled my back. Literally I leant over to pick up the remote and I pulled a muscle in my back and couldn't play. 
there's nothing you can do about it. It's just one of those things. My friend sneezed and pulled all of the intercostal muscle between her ribs. There's nothing you can do about it. it. Just unfortunately, it just happens. And unfortunately, it's led to just another long term injury. You know, you look, that's Jungle Kiona, that's Natsuka Tora, that's Saya Ida are all out now with long term mm-hmm. injuries. Mm-hmm. Not just that their main event scene deplete was depleted this time last year as well. This is just what happens. We start sometimes it's hard and done doing though either push work is too hard or in the case of Ruiz it didn't force it to get checked soon enough. Um and we'll ha- let ling- lingering injuries get worse and then boom. Because part because part of what you need to do with promotion is understand that you can't let wrestlers um decide their own whether or not they can go to the hospital, but also you can't abuse that power. <laughs> It's a, but in this case, this isn't that. This isn't wear and tear. This is fluke. Uh, so, I don't think there's a single way I can put this other than it's shit in it. It's bad. I feel so sorry. The fact that she was so human, that you sometimes you forget that they are people. You know, you just see them as their characters. You know, the people that they portray, and just seeing her dead, and she knew as well. As soon as she lay down and the doctor came out, she knew. And she's literally having to be held down by Starlight Kid and Saki because she wanted to carry on. And they're like, you can't, okay? You might have broken your leg. Please stop. And just her yelling at you, Tommy. It's just, it's it's awful to watch. It really, really is. Obviously, we're not going to rate this match, obviously. Um, but yeah, we just, we wish Natsuka Tora the very best. Fingers crossed, it's going to be closer to the nine month, um, sort of time than twelve months. But from everything I've heard, from apparently every corner of Twitter and the news realm, it looks like it's going to be twelve months. So, just just devastating. Um, something we didn't actually mention at the end of Tam Nakano and Saya Kamatani. After that, um, Saya Kamatani refused to shake Tam's hand. Um, Basically, Tam said we should fight together. Saya ignored that because she doesn't want to fight with Tam. She wants to fight above Tam. And Starlight Kid came out. It's all good being the only 20-something among a bunch of people in the 30s, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> Starlight Kid came out and challenged Tam for the white belt. Um, and that's going to be excellent. That's going to be amazing. And actually brings me on to the next point of our podcast. Um, Stardom have announced the dates and the cards of the Stardom Cinderella Tour 2021, which is the tour before the Five Star. Now, there are about seven dates, maybe even eight, but I'm not going to go through every match on every card because fuck that. Um, There's no point in me saying it because you won't remember it anyway. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say there are title matches on these cards, so I'm just going to read you out the title matches basically. Um, so the 6th of July, which is today, as we've recorded, there is an Artist of Stardom Championship match with Cosmic Angels defending against Utami Azumi and Asaya. Um, and then 10th of July in Osaka. Why that, didn't that happen on a, on a build-up? That would have been a perfect build-up match. You mean what when, you mean when um, Cosmic Angels defended against Oida Tai? <sighs> I know. I should it should have been the other way around. Cosmic Angels. It's, it's literally the perfect... Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, 10th of July in Osaka is the SWA Undisputed Women's Championship match between Suri and Unagi. Um, don't forget, Unagi did eliminate Suri from the Cinderella tournament as well, so there is that. Um, I'm not going to say that yet, because um, I'll ask. Um, on the 21st of July in Sapporo, we've got the White Belt Defense, Tam Nakano versus Starlight Kid. I think Starlight is taking that, Chris. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I I really do think that Starlight is going to take that um, for a multitude of reasons, um, but then I feel like Starlight will beat Mayu in a defense as well. But on the flip side of that is Tam's art complete until she's faced Mayu for the belt until she's beaten mm-hmm. Mayu for the belt. But stardom seems to have completely forgotten that feud. So 
who knows? Saw them something. <laughs> Never. Um, on the 22nd of July, again, in Sapporo, we've got back-to-back Sapporo dates, um, is the Goddesses of Stardom match between ALK and Aphrodite. That is going to bang, and I can't wait for that match. Um, there is also a lot of stars versus Awida Tai on these cards. Like, stars versus Awida Tai on a stardom show? Never. Like an unbelievable amount of stars. A lot of Mayu and, and Starlight Kid facing off. Um, a lot of Mayu and Kaguma versus Starlight and Konami, which looks very tasty. Um, now, a quick question. Something that has come out of today's Corican show has led to a match on the 17th of July, Chris, in Takadanababa. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do you want me to say it now? Or shall Um, I say it on the next podcast? Um, say it now. Okay. Because I'm going to be on Twitter. I'm going to get spoiled anyway. Well, yeah, exactly. So if you don't want to hear it, ladies and gentlemen, just fast forward a couple of minutes. Um, The... Match for the 17th, um, basically Konami challenged Mayu after their match um, and said, if you want Starlight Kid back, we'll give it to you, but you've got to beat us in a five-on-one handicap match. (laughs) Which Mayu accepted. Mayu's gonna die, gonna die. Mayu's gonna die. Yeah. On the 17th of July, Mayu versus all of Awida Tai, which... You're going to have to watch Fallon like we're doing in fucking Clockwork Orange, aren't you? You're going to have to have your eyes fucking forced open. Do you know what? Like, it actually makes sense in the feud. It makes, it makes sense. It makes sense for Mayu's character. May, May, I'm tired. May, it makes sense for Mayu's character because, you know, she's not exactly... <laughs> she. I don't, think she, I don't think she reads very much in well, character. It does. It makes sense in that re- in that sort of regard, but it also makes sense, you know. This way, she's not going to lose anyone else. It's her fault you know she what? lost Starlight Kid, so therefore she's on her own. You know and what ultimately, I really hope happens. I hope May like somehow wins, like she nickel and dimes her way to a win, and then Starlight refuses. How good would that be? That's not going to happen. Do you, know, <laughs> do you know what? I could actually see that happening. That, that would be incredible. Like, it? may you get in a cheeky, like a cheeky pinfall over like Ruaka or Rina or something. Yeah, like the rest of stars come because Stardom apparently don't have rules. <laughs> um, the rest of stars can come out, clear out. What's the rest of stars? The rest Hanan of stars, and, and Kaguma. Han- yeah, Hannah and Kaguma can come out, clear, <laughs> clear the children. <laughs> um, and then gets the win, and Stardom's just like, no, I like it here. <laughs> because I wouldn't be surprised, if, like with Torigon. Oh, how did I have a power vacuum? This was where I was going with the Starlight Kid having taken the belt from Tam because Saki's come out and said, I'll look after Oida Tai until you come back, Tori. You've then got Starlight Kid, who, of course, is this growing entity in Oida Tai. Don't forget, you've also got Konami yeah, as well. It's content being great, but no one cares. What if she makes a play? There, there is a storyline there. Whether they actually go that route or not, the infighting in a weird tie. I've, I've learned that's um, one thing. If there's one thing that um, a weird tie don't do, uh, stardom doesn't do rather is look at a feud that's ready made of a table and take it. <laughs> they keep looking gift horses in the mouth. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll see. Um, we'll see. That's that's where we're at going forward. Um, so I'm excited about that. I think the realistically the only belt that i see changing hands is the white belt i think the tag belts are going to stay with alk um i'd be absolutely gobsmacked if unagi took the swa off siuri absolutely Mm -hmm. gobsmacked um i think it could be a good match but you know it depends how much siuri is going to hold a hand and then again um, I'd be surprised if Utami, Azumi, and Saya take the artist's belt off Cosmic Angels, though I don't know who is left now to take the belts off Cosmic Angels. I think they've run through everyone. I'm pretty sure that's that's either Defense 7 or Defense 8 for them, so the I don't know. Faction. <laughs> Someone's put on Twitter a picture of uh, Goto, Ishii, and Yoshihashi and said the next challenges. I mean, like... <laughs> it wouldn't surprise you if Yoshihashi ate a fucking pin. 
Well, yes, yeah, my be- my beautiful baby boy. Um, right, just to end it then, Chris, we sort of glossed over the five star. Let's look back on it. The five star. Um, the blocks just again. Julian Momo. Obviously, it's not going to be Tora now. Um, we don't know who is going to be filling in for her. There is no Fukuk and Death on here, so it could be her. Could be Lady C. Could be Hannon. We don't know. Um, Saki, SLK, uh, Natsupoi, Himika, Kaguma, Mina, Mayu. And then Blue Block, Yutami, Suri, Tam, Sayaka, Matani, Mika, Azumi, Ruwaka, Konami, Yunagi, and a mystery guest. The first thing to ask is, who do you think is going to be the mystery person? Um, Yoshihashi. I'd love it. I'd love it. Maybe you'll get a win. I'd love it. Yeah. Um, Hiroyashi Tenzan. For lost yeah. <laughs> him and his ankle. Um, it would not surprise me if it turns out to be Rin Karakura. No, um, because Marvelous don't run a ton of shows. So, did Marvelous have any show? I, I, I don't know. I'm asking you. You wouldn't know. Uh, they've got their anniversary <laughs> show in July. That's the only show I'm aware of. Um, then you can easily book the five star around. Mm. Um, Takumi Rojo is coming back. That'd be a big guess. That's that's who I want. That's that's who I want. Whether that will be who it is, I don't know. But I hope it's an outsider because outsiders add a lot to it. Because I mean, we see some variation of these matches all the time through tag matches, right? Mm. So an outsider just adds that unknown element. Like when Marafuji and Shingo went into the Champion Carnival, or even like Moxley and the G One. Yeah, exactly. Um, like it adds it adds so much. So I hope it's an outsider and not just Lady C. Well, Velkage has said on Twitter that they have said it's going to be someone from an outs- from an outside promotion. So okay. you look at the working relationship that Stardom have with Marvelous. We are we are working on the Marvelous show, so maybe that's where we're being announced. Maybe so. Might be Mei Suzuki. It could be someone from Seedling. It could be it could be Nene or could be Nene. Um, I could, could say be Shiko. Is she Shiko's injured, isn't she? Is she still injured? So she's still yeah. out. Fuck. Um, I'd say Asuka, but they um they're a freelancer, aren't they? So well, if they're yeah. a freelancer, I suppose they could go yeah, but, in. But, yeah, but they'll be wrestle all over the place. Oh yeah, that is true. So like, hey, are they willing to like not work another promotion for a month? Well. They work basically consistently with Adam. Mm. I doubt it. Yeah. So if if it's from I'd like Nene because that would probably be the best. Um, yes, especially since again, she's one of those places that don't run a lot of shows. Yeah. If if it was if it was Nene, I'd want her in Red Block just so that Momo could get a win back. But you know, Helpful. that's that's by the by. So. Um... So, so yeah, I guess, I guess we're both, it could be um, Rin Katakura because mm. of the Mayo connection. May, why do I keep saying Mayo? <laughs> uh, it could be um, Mayo Shuki. That's but I imagine you know, it'll be one of those three: Iroha, yeah. Hoshizuki, or Katakura. I'd love it to Name be Iroha, but we'll see. We'll see. She's only just come back from injury. Throwing her into a tournament might be hard. Yeah, that might be a, that might be a bit mean, yeah. Um, maybe it's Lance Archer. Maybe. Um, Mad Genius Val on Twitter um, has asked, besides the obvious and Julia winning the tournament, what do you guys think will be the main takeaways from this year's Grand Prix? Whether it be people being elevated, the direction of Tam's reign, etc. Um, I'm going to lump all this with, you know, who do you think is going to be in the final, Chris? Who do you think is going to win it? Um, that sort of thing. Okay, so first of all, in terms of um, what do you think the takeaways are going to be, AK, what's going to be the capital D discourse? I think it's going to be the same as any um, round robin where people are like, oh my god, these people are so good, why aren't they pushing them? And the stardom will go ahead and not push them. Mm-hmm. Konami? Like you're gonna, yeah, you're going to get Konami having good show in, that's the point, having a good show in. Um... Momo. <laughs> Momo. Um... Even like Azumi and Starlight, Mike, or even like. But I, I was thinking about this the other day. The only. There's not a ton of um, baggage in the five star considering they've expanded the field size. Like um, you have in blue stars, the only ones I'd say are bad, are like are going to be like skippable matches. Uh, 
there isn't really one. I mean, <sighs> interesting. Like they're they're not like I'm not saying they're weak, but like they're going to be like skippable. Nothing special kind of thing. Like honestly, I'm surprised the blocks are as solid as they are. Um, in terms of who I think is going to be in the, like, I'm surprised the blocks are as solid as they are. Like they've actually, oh, we haven't seen a ton from, um, I like a lot of these people we don't see them wrestle all that um against each other all that often, and then in Utami's block you have um a lot of the better challenges like Shiri and um Shiri Saya and well Shiri and Saya. So <laughs> well, there's also Mike in there. Don't forget Konami. Yeah. In terms of who's going to the final, uh, well, Mike is in the other block. Mike's in Utami's block. Oh, she is. Um, in ter- so yeah, Utami's basically getting the two of her challenges, mm. which is interesting. Um, in terms of her team, the final, we can happily rule out any champions. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. So Utami's out, Shiri's out, Tam's out, and um, Julia might be out. Oh no, sorry. Right, I see what you mean now. No, I disagree. Then, right, who do you? Thinks real right. Who do you think? Real, let's start with who's ruled out. Um, so from B- Red Block, not going to the final. Uh, Momo, Saki, <laughs> hashtag Momo's buried. Uh, Nats probably won't be going there. Um, um, you know who won't be going? Tora, uh, Tora, Kaguma won't be. Mina won't be. I think Mayu will lose on the final night. I think Mayu will be there or thereabouts, but she'll lose on the final night. Um, and you know, if logical booking sense prevails you know she's in a block with starlight kid have mm-hmm. starlight kid be the one to stop her getting to the final yeah um it, this year for me is a more obvious winner than last year um you look at blue block and you think for me it's between konami um siori is that a head pick or is that a heart pick no, be real. Um, you, be real you look at who hasn't got the ability to go through. You Nagi won't go through. Konami won't go through. The Outsider and, won't I, go I through. I wouldn't be surprised if Nagi fucking went through after oh, that. Yeah. Well. Azumi won't go through, which leaves Mike, Asaya, Tam, Suri, and Yutami. Tam won't go through unless she I hasn't don't. got the belt. She might do. Um, I don't see Mike going through. I don't see Mike going through. Yutami won't go through because she's champion. Although she could go through and lose in the final, but I don't think that'll be the case. I don't think that kids fast just all Japan shit at that point. Well, at that point, then, if someone beats her to stop her going through, that's also a ready made challenge. Yeah. So, realistically, I mean, if you've got Julie going through in Red Block, which I have because I think it's very, very obvious who's winning it this year, who would you want Julie to have in the final? Um, I guess Tam would draw. Julia Tam is a great shout. What about Julia um, Suri? Suri, yeah, it depends how long we make that go again. But what? Um, what if Chris? And this is something I've seen just repeated by a lot of people. What if Suri tops the block, having beaten Utami? And then we've and, got the next instalment of that at a future yeah. arena show later on. Uh, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be the worst. Shiri and Itami is a hot property, especially outside, uh, especially to um, newcomers. Exactly. Um, and I'm not saying it's a bad way. I think at that point, people are just trying to shoe Hong setting up this rematch in there. And like, I'm not saying that not work. That's actually a surprisingly logical way of booking to come out of Stard and Twitter. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be su- like honestly. If someone upset Julia, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you. Mm. I guess in her block, there's not a ton of... Um, yeah, actually, yeah. In terms of Julia's block, I don't think there's much competition, apart from maybe May. Yeah. Tora, Tora would have been competition. Absolutely. I agree. Um, Momo, Momo in theory is a threat. Momo in theory is absolutely a threat. I'd, she's got to be high up the block. I don't think yeah. she's going through. She's mm-hmm. certainly not winning it. Yeah. Because she's got absolutely no heat going forward, and she's already challenged Utami at the moment. So this this reeks of Julia's coming out party for the red belt. Um, mm-hmm. I I've seen I think again I think it was Armani Show Exchange saying that the main event of the first show Yokohama Budokan 
run it as Utami versus Shiori, that first block yeah. match. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's, it's that of the finals, quite frankly. Yeah, absolutely. You're running two arenas during this. Make sure that Utami and Siori is headlining one of them. Mm. Make sure that, and then you want Julia and Mayu as your other one. Make it proper front load that show. Have your best matchups. So leave Inagi at home. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um... So I never asked you, Chris, because um, I pretty much went balls out and said Julia's winning it. Um, who have you got to win it? Who have you got to win this tournament? And who do you see as being your MVP of the tournament? Similar to how we both said, I think we were both oh. in agreement that Konami was our MVP Konami was, last year. Uh, well, think? MVP and um, Bash Rattler, I think, are two different things. Well, yeah. Who do you think is going to be the most consistent? Whose matches are you going to look forward to? Who's going to um, have that May's great gonna tournament? Probably have consistent performances. She's not really done much single stuff this year. No, that's so true. She might be raring to go. Who knows? Um, I think Himika could do well. She does really good in these short blasts. As does, as does Tam. As does Momo. Uh, Momo kind of something stalled Momo last year, but I can't I'm, I can't quite tangibly say what that was. Um. No. Like, Momo wasn't as good last year as you'd expect her to be in the five-star. No, I don't know what it was. But again, we, we, we said this all through last year's five-star. Don't expect um, actual five-star matches from... Five, five, um, are we still doing the 20-minute time limit? As far as I'm aware, there's been nothing announced to say that they're changing it. <laughs> eh. Um, so, yeah, maybe do expect more longer... Matches. Um, I think Starlight could really prove herself. She's ha- she's having a great year. The now with limited singles pushes, mm, definitely. So that could be a same with Azumi. Azumi was great last year and all. Mm. Um, honestly, basically everyone who isn't Unagi, Ruaka, Mina, or Koguma <laughs> has a chance of wowing. It's going to be an interesting five star. I love the fact that you still haven't told me who's going to win. You're just like, I'm going to keep that close to my chest. Because everyone's saying Julia, and I feel like I'm going to be a contrarian if I say anyone else. Be but a I contrarian, see, Chris. Go on. I could, I could see Tam losing the white belt, going through five star, going for the red belt. I could see it. Because um, we have to remember, not, they don't always do this big cl- Stardom aren't always inclined for this big climb to the top, like people are booking for Julia, where she goes down and goes back up. Despite that, that would be logical. Whereas you look at last year, Utami just kind of won. Mm. This wasn't like a big build that was going on for years and years and years. Well, no. she, that she wasn't around long enough for, <laughs> for it to be years and years and years. But um, So it could just be someone wins it. You know? Yeah, no build. Could be. That's the beauty of a tournament like this, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So, who knows? Who absolutely knows? Well, um, I think that's... Let's knock it on the head there. Um, in terms of recording for us when it comes to the five-star, um, I think it'll, it. we are at the mercy of Stardom World Uploads. Um, so, we're going to try and do, you know, a, a week of the five star matches if that makes sense um but if you know we're recording on a sunday and there's been a show on the saturday we're obviously not going to be able to cover that show because stardom will won't have uploaded it so again you're gonna have to bear with us as we go through it um but thank you very much for listening guys we really 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 do appreciate it if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast please go subscribe to it you can subscribe anywhere you get your podcasts. We are everywhere. Please leave us a five-star review and a comment. It really does help the podcast. Our helps us to be noticed by more people. Uh, Go and check out the website, www.podmania.co.uk for all our archived episodes and all of our match ratings, features, reviews, all that kind of jazz. Um, You can find the podcast on Twitter at at the Stardomcast. Uh, Please join our Discord uh, where you can talk with all other people about the wonderful world of stardom and if there's a pay-per-view going there's a channel where we can all watch it together please go check that out lovely people really really nice welcoming atmosphere go check that out um and yeah you can talk to me on twitter at, at real rob goodwin chris where can they find you uh chris Lespira. and uh yeah we will see you guys again soon <laughs> <laughs>